I'm Christine. Hello, I'm John. And, and we, we are, are the 7th grade, grade Social Studies teachers. Ali, and welcome to my classroom. Oh, hop a day. I'm Eric Greedo from Puntalot Middle School. Hop a day. My name is Crystal Timinglow. Hello, and hop a day. I'm Mrs. Uh, good morning, uh, my name is Alex Manjala. Half a day, I'm Fernando the Chati. My name is Ryan Shipman. I'm uh, R.B. Bukani. Half a day, my name is Manny Manguni. Um, I'm here to share with you guys the different classroom strategies that we use in physical. Half a day, welcome to Ms. Nellis' reading class. So today I'm going to show you a STEM strategy that's called transferring the learning to the students. One of the classroom strategies I use under STEM is hands-on experience with my students. And one of the teaching strategies that I use is from STEM, and that is accepting failure. A literacy strategy that I use in my reading class is read aloud. And one of the literacy strategies that I use in my classroom is photo books. And what I use for literacy strategies is journal and reflection essays. All right, so one of the strategies we use uh, for CITW, which is classroom instruction that works, is what we call uh, emphasizing effort and providing recognition. Well, in my science classroom, the CITW strategy that I often use is obviously generating and testing hypotheses. Hey, this is a classroom instruction that works on learning communities. Produce the final version of their work, so this would be uh, how we get from our objective into the final piece of the assignment. Here at our robotics lab, my students learned through the STEM teaching practice of providing hands-on experiential learning through the use of these LEGO NXT robotic kits. Students in my language arts class use the four square method. The purpose is to have each student organize their writing, create an outline, and follow that outline by creating a traditional five paragraph essay that includes an introduction, three paragraphs that support a thesis, and a conclusion. Summarizing and notating. This fosters powerful learning. Students develop a deeper understanding and appreciation of what they learned. They are also able to understand a point of view and by the same token, develop their own thoughts and opinions. Over here, the projects that I had the students do were to build moving models. And um, here's an example of a student how a student can explain the similarities and differences in between a plant and animal cell. So in the jigsaw puzzle, students will work together to find the solutions for problems. Pull 16 tiles out and try to create uh, a, a square out of the tiles. So they start off with rectangular shapes and then they kind of mess with it. And then eventually they see as you can see at the Wildcat Garden, our students have worked hard and worked with our community partners from 4-H. They've learned about agriculture, hydroponics, aquaponics, as well as social Hi, for sixth grade reading, um, I love introducing the Freyer model. And it is a very new strategy for them. So when I first introduce the skill, I usually have them with a partner so that they become more comfortable. And we use Freyer models to introduce unfamiliar words to them. Um, they're able the kids, to they have they really struggle to come up with a with a story or how their essay will be laid out. So this really helps them. Especially the first thing, the first instructions for them to do is to think of a moment in their beginning part of the story before their problem occurs. So the way we did it is the first quarter students had to be able to identify and, and define landforms. So we had to each student create one landform on a flashcard. And then on the back of the flashcard, they put the definition of the landform, and they use that or it's groups uh, studying each other in, prepar in preparation of the vocabulary for my class. I have the kids work on PowerPoints because they got tired of me lecturing to them. So this kind of allows them to do what they want to do at their own pace. So basically it starts... Images from the story or themes from the story 
in a drawing, a sketch, or a model that represents symbolically something important from the story. So this is one way in which I use non-linguistic representation in my classroom. Asia, North and South America, Africa, Antarctica, and Australia, Europe. However, there must be some guidelines. Each student is required to turn in a project proposal, such as this listed, or sorry, just as shown. And whatever projects come out will be based off of their proposal. Of course, it must be subject to approval. For me, I like to incorporate technology as much as possible, and one of the ways I do that is having kids uh, produce videos regarding the topic or subject matter. We use cooperative learning via commercial writing. Um, in, the, in the commercial writing, groups were required to have a script writer, actors, video editor, and a data analyst. Um, one of the main literacy strategies that I like to use is foldables. I find that uh, it keeps my students engaged and they like to put in a lot of effort to try and outdo some of the samples from previous years that I show them. First quarter, we did a map elements foldable where each student had to identify and illustrate the elements of a map. So on the front side, they identified it and they also illustrated some examples. Inside, they had to describe what each element of the map is used for. The foldable literacy strategy, we based it on the cultures of the Native American regions. So what I had them do was to fold it into four squares open it and close it. Each region they had 12 to choose from. They had to pick four. So on the outside flaps they needed to create the names and draw pictures of stuff that related to the, each region individually. And then on the inside they had to come up with at least 10 facts Portables. that were... As you can see, I gave my students uh, portables to do on type of sentences. They had to identify and give examples for each type of sentence. And give, it's a good way for them to understand the material. The pictures of their family members and write a brief paragraph about each member. Um, capitalization rules. So they each had to uh, make a label for the different types of rules, then inside they had to write examples. So I gave them a few examples and then they had to come up with an example of their own to show me uh, their understanding. <laughs> Aren't they awesome? They're so colorful and so representative of our students today. So please teachers, always try your best. Use new items that will stimulate the students and get their energy flowing for learning. Thank you very much. Masula. So thank you for listening and watching and have a great day.